What's up, boxing fans? I just wanted to have a look at Mayweather's body of work throughout his entire career. I feel Mayweather cherry picked a lot of his fights. Let's look at his body of work to determine whether or not what I'm saying is true so we can show the facts. The first guy, Floyd Ford, for his WBC and lineal super featherweight titles was Gennaro Hernandez at super featherweight, which is 130. He beat Gennaro Hernandez because Gennaro Hernandez, you know, he, he, he retired in the corner. Now, Gennaro, let's look at Gennaro Hernandez's body of work so we can determine how good he was. Hold on. Let's just go down to his loss. Now, Gennaro Hernandez had a 38-1 record before he fought Floyd Mayweather. Now, how many titles did he win? He beat Azuma Nelson for a super featherweight title. He lost to Oscar De La Hoya. He won the WBA Super Featherweight title. So he was a two-weight world champion. This guy was a live opponent, a very game opponent, very live opponent. And Mayweather beat him. Full credit to Mayweather for beating Gennaro Hernandez. But, you know, Gennaro Hernandez did have one foot out the door and he was about to retire. So he, did, he didn't exactly have the passion for the sport anymore so I'm thinking he probably didn't have you know the motivation to prepare for a fight of that magnitude moving on to Floyd's next world title fight I mean at 130 they were absolute killers you know he didn't fight anybody of note in any of his fights Angel Manfredi, Carlos Rios, Justin Juco, Carlos Greener Gregorio Vargas, all these guys aren't really top fighters, so, you know, I mean, I can't really say anything, because those guys are cherry picks, you know, maybe they cherry pick those fights, none of those guys were elite, Andrew Manfredi was a bum, Carlos Rios was a bum, Justin Juco was a bum, and so on and so on, his first real test at that weight was Diego Corrales, he beat Diego Corrales with a superb performance and utterly humiliated Diego Corrales, an undefeated one like that. But there's also something fishy with that fight. He weight drained Diego Corrales to 130 after Diego Corrales asked for the fight at 135. He had to weight drain Corrales because he felt that he couldn't beat a fully, a fully, a fully hydrated Corrales. You know, the, the, the water that you have to drain out of your body to make weight drains yourself, drains your body and it makes you less susceptible to be able to take a punch as we saw with with um, Andre Ward versus Chad Dawson you know that fight was because Chad Dawson had to rehydrate had to like drain himself from 175 to get to 168 so his punch resistance was lower this is a prime example of that you know maybe they had to have an advantage in this fight also he had an advantage in this fight as well, Gennaro Hernandez. So, he, his first two real tests, he's had advantages in those two fights. Moving on to Jose Luis Castillo. Now, Castillo was, you know, a very a good fighter. But he, he Mayweather tries to say, Well, I moved up to 135 and I beat the number one guy at that weight. No, you didn't, Floyd. You didn't beat the number one guy at that weight. Jose Luis Castillo was at best the fourth, fourth best guy at that weight. So who the fuck are you? To, you, you, ain't, you ain't fooling boxing fans by saying that bullshit. Now, he beat Jose Luis Castillo, but a lot of people felt that he lost the fight. You know, go look at the punches that's after the fight. And Mayweather got outlanded, outthrown, outworked by Jose Luis Castillo. I had the fight, 115-112 for Jose Luis Castillo. Easy decision. Castillo won the first fight, but, you know, officially, you know, they robbed him of the win. And even Bob Arum said, oh, he lost the fight. The ring commentators felt he lost the fight. Everybody lost, felt he may have lost the fight. 
Now, Mayweather did do something that surprised me and a lot of boxing fans because he rematched Castillo. And he beat him pretty well in the second fight. So that's good. I mean, why didn't he fight Joel Casamor, Casamayor, Ashley Nuno Freitas? Or Paul Spadafora at this weight? Those guys were good. Why didn't he ever unify at the 135 pound division? The only time he unified in his entire career was against Marcus Maidana, right? The only time he unified in his entire career was Marcus Maidana at 147. And he unified also at 154, but that was later on in his career, which we'll be getting into soon. Now, the first fight he lost, second fight he won convincingly, alright? Okay, okay. He wasn't really cherry picking up until this point. He was, he was still cherry picking, but not at the same level as he was cherry picking later on in his career. Okay, okay, I'll give you that, Floyd. Okay, let's keep going. Next live opponent he fought was Arturo Thundergatti. Now, Arturo Gatti was never really a top fighter. He was never really a good boxer. He was just a guy that takes more punishment than you. So that he can just basically beat the shit out of your liver or hit you with like thunderous left hooks to the body to knock you out. So he basically takes more punishment than you. And so that he can prove that, the only way he wins most of his fights is that so he can prove that he, you can't take the same punishment he took from you. You know what I mean? But Mayweather beat him easily and he won the WBC Super Lightweight title at 140. So, the guys he fought up until this point, Jose Luis Castillo, Diego Carras, and Gennaro Hernandez were the only live opponents he fought, and he lost one of those fights. I mean, let's ask the question again. Why did he never unify at 140? Why did he never unify, and why does he always fight for the WBC titles man like the guy has never ever unified at any lower weight other than 147 and 154 tell me why that's the case tell me why that's the case Floyd Mayweather fans why don't you tell us why that's the case comment down below what you think man okay then he moved up to 147 to fight Zab Super Judah for the IBF and vacant IBO welterweight titles. That was also a circus fight. Because Zab had just got the shit beat out of him by Carlos Baldemir. You know, I mean, the only reason why the IBF title was on the line. Is because Baldemir couldn't pay the fucking sanctioning fees to get the belt. So the only reason why Zab had the fucking belt is because uh, Carlos Baldemir couldn't pay the fucking sanctioning fees. Oh my god, these niggas, man, they make me so fucking laugh. Anyway, so, he won the IBF and IBO welterweight titles. Okay, alright, he won those three titles. But even then, Zab was winning the first four rounds of that 12-round contest. He won four rounds out of 12, you know, and even knocked down Floyd in the first four rounds. So, you know, obviously they never gave him the knockdown because the judges are in the referees always in... Floyd Mayweather's pocket, but hey, um, looking at the scorecards for the fight, David Moretti gave him four rounds, and Jerry Roth, his bitch ass, only gave that three rounds, uh, whatever, okay, moving up, Carlos Baldemir, a guy with a 41-9 and nine record at that time, a bum, he fought for the WBC, and I don't even know what the IBA title is, it's not even a, it's not even a fucking recognized title. I mean, why did he vacate the IBF title? Why did he vacate it against Carlos Baldwin? Why couldn't he unify? You know, some more fishy stuff going on there. And he beat Baldwin by a 12-round decision. But he never wanted to fight the other guys out that way, like Paul Williams, Antonio Margarito. He ducked those guys to fight Carlos Baldwin. And even Bob Aaron offered him $8 million to fight Antonio Margarito at that weight. But he ignored those, those comments by Bob, Bob Aaron. And he wanted to fight Carlos bummed him here for the WBC, IBA, the ring and lineal welterweight titles. You know, he beat him by 121 away. I thought he won the fight, but, you know, he's a bum. He should have knocked him out, Floyd. 
bomb around the foot. Okay. Floyd then moved up to 154 pounds to fight Oscar De La Hoya for WBC middleweight title. Light middleweight title. And in this fight, I had it 7-5 for Oscar. I felt Oscar won the fight. But, you know, these fucking judges always give it to Floyd. You know, one judge had, had, this, had, had the same scorecard as me, which was pretty surprising because I felt the judges were always going to rob any opponent that made with the face, you know, they was going to rob the opponent. But they gave it to, uh, they gave it to Floyd. Split decision, okay. All right. You moved to 154, you beat the Oscar, okay, okay. And even in that fucking fight, you had to, you had to fucking bribe the judges and whatever. Before Ricky Hatton, I won 4-7. Instead of fighting him at 140, where Ricky Hatton was the... Undisputed champion because he had just beat Costas you. So why don't you fight Costas you? Why'd you duck Costas you? Why'd you duck um, Ricky Hatton at 140? Why'd you duck all those other champions at 140 as well? You know, he, he ducked those fights. Now he went on a two year retirement because he felt he would never be able to beat any of the killers at 147. He could not beat not one ranked opponent. In the top 10 pounds of pound at welterweight at that time. So he retired for two years. Because he wanted to wait until the landscape changed. Can't you see this guy? He's a fucking bitch made motherfucker. He fucking fights Manuel Marquez. At 144.4 pounds. And fails to make weight. <sighs> he failed to make weight. Against a lightweight. You know and then when they asked him. Why are you fighting fucking Manuel Marquez. They say. Oh, Marquez called me out. Lots of guys call you out, Floyd. Why don't you fucking fight Paul Williams? Antonio Margarito. Why don't you fight Shane Mosley at lightweight? Why don't you fight Ricky Hatton at 140? Man, I don't know why I'm making this fucking video with this clown. So he moved up to... He fought Shane Mosley next. But that wasn't even a fight to be talked about because he could have had the WBC... 154 pound title that Shane Mosley had just beat off of Antonio Margarito to fight for. So why did they fight at well twenty instead of 154? You know, whatever. There was rumors Floyd had juiced up in that fight as well. Also, there was rumors that Floyd had juiced up against the fight with Shane Mosley, and he he dropped dirty for an A sample, which you sort of failed to disclose to their opponent because they gave him a TUE in that fight. Also, therapy to use exemption. You know, he fought Victor Ortiz, who was a bum. I'm not even going to talk about that one because he's a bum. Cotto. Now, Cotto was a tough fight. But Cotto had just been knocked out by Pacquiao. He had just been knocked out by Margarito with flipping <laughs> plaster of Paris in his fucking gloves. So, that's a fucking sucks fight. And he beat a guy that had just been brutalized by two tough opponents. Guerrero. You know, the only reason why he fought Guerrero was because he said, Oh, Guerrero was my mandatory. But you never fought your mandatory, not once in your entire career. You didn't fight your mandatory up, up until 147. Because the only reason why you fought him is because you thought you could beat Robert Guerrero because he was an easy opponent for you. <sighs> Next, he fights Canelo out. Like, Canelo was too young at the time. You know, he also drained Canelo at 150 to 152 pounds he drained him by two pounds and fucking promos are trying to tell me that two pounds don't make a difference two pounds don't make a difference right two pounds don't don't like don't drain the shit out of you and the water and the water weight doesn't affect the way you fight in the fight and it doesn't drain you for the for the last six rounds of the fight because you're not hydrated properly come on man canelo alvarez clearly lost the fight but what i'm saying is that he was weight drained. He was too young. He was too green at the time. He was like 22. He was weight drained. Two pounds. He didn't have enough experience. To be fighting the best. Pound pound fighter in the world at that time. And it was. It wasn't exactly. A. A good fight for Canelo to fight. Because I mean if he fought Canelo at 155. Or he fought him at middleweight. Then he probably would have. Lost the fight and get knocked out by Canelo Alvarez. That's what I think. Marcos Maidana. 
Um, the first fight. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's something else I almost forgot about Marcus Maidana. The fans had a poll for Maidana or Khan for him to fight Maidana or Amir Khan. But Amir Khan won the poll. And then Floyd Mayweather literally just went. <laughs> he said, fuck what I said. I'm 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 gonna fight Maidana. I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not finna fight no uh, Amir Khan. <laughs> but the but, but Amir Khan had just won the poll when the fans beg and plead him to fight Amir Khan. He goes ahead and rematches Maidana, and then he goes ahead and rematches Maidana when he should have fought Amir Khan, and he clearly outboxed Maidana eight to four for the first fight just so he could set up a second fight with Maidana. Just so he could say, oh, it was a close fight. I need to make sure I showed the people who the champion was by by beating him convincingly. But Floyd, you clearly made it a tough fight just for just to just to just to have the rematch in mind. Just so you can have the rematch in mind. Fucking bitch. Next he fought Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao, he oh, he had a therapy to use exemption prior before the fight. And he used 75 milliliters of illegal IVs and he had the medical team juicing him up in his fucking hotel room and then he he, he had to bribe USADA so that he could drop dirty and make sure that they don't unify they don't notify Manny Pacquiao of a failed drug A sample or be or have to notify the Nevada State Athletic Commission if he drops dirty for a drug test so they don't have to test his B sample <laughs> oh my god man And he fought Manny Pacquiao with a shoulder injury Is that what you're telling me He could have fought Manny Pacquiao That was knocking out motherfuckers Knocking out motherfuckers in 2009 When he knocked out uh, Ricky Hatt When he knocked out Oscar De La Hoya When he knocked When he knocking out all kinds of motherfuckers out You're trying to tell me that he's going to beat Manny Pacquiao in 2009 And then Floyd Mayweather had to bitch about drug testing For all those years because he felt that he couldn't beat Manny Pacquiao and he would get knocked out. And then the fans beg and plead him to fight Amir Khan. But he fights Andre Berto. And he <laughs> he fights Andre Berto when the fans beg and plead him to fight Amir Khan. Or Keith Thurman. Or Gennady Golovkin at middleweight. Man, this guy is a bitch made motherfucker. His whole career is full of cherry picks. The only guy he fought that wasn't a cherry pick was Diego Cross. And even in that fight, he had to have some kind of advantage. With the weight So You know this guy has a cherry picked resume Tell me what you guys think In the comment down, comment down below What you guys think about me without having a cherry picked resume And just You know give me your thoughts and opinions And make sure to subscribe